The Teen Arts Podcast is part of the Teen Ticks Press Corps newsroom. You can call us TAP for short. The Press Corps works to connect teens to art journalism opportunities. We're Ava, Huma, and Catherine. We think youth voices are important, and we love art. That's why we've created this podcast series, with the hopes to explore how the world around us and art intersect. Listen as we delve into Mirror Stage's work to address gun violence through art in this three-part series. What's on tap? Today, we're going to meet the playwrights. Gun control is a pressing issue in the U.S., claiming over 10,000 lives in 2019 alone. In January, eight civilians were shot on the streets of Seattle within 24 hours. To say the least, the arts community is concerned. This is how one Seattle theater company is tackling it. Seattle playwright Amontane Arore started out as an actor. I didn't really like the kinds of roles that I was being offered, and it seemed very limited. And so I decided that as a Black actor, I wanted to create some roles for myself and for others that were more along the lines of the people I knew in my life and three-dimensional characters. The Seattle Theater Company, Mirror Stage, commissioned Aurore to write a play about gun control. Her play, titled Memory Bus, It's about a woman who witnesses a violent act on a bus. And it's five years later, and she's still struggling. Um, She's still dealing with the trauma from that event. Her piece explores a realistic take on the aftermath of gun violence. Aurora is not prepared for her character to live through such a horrific event on stage. The violent act is not shown. Instead, the audience listens as the protagonist experiences her traumas in therapy. On the topic of gun control, Aurora knows it is a problem but the root of it may not be obvious. To my mind, there has to be there has to be something done. There has to be some restrictions done. But I also think that the gun violence is a symptom of deeper ailments within our society that are not being addressed. Another playwright, Sienna Mendez, was given the same prompt. She, however, took a very different approach. Sienna's play, In My Good Christian Neighborhood, tells the story of a gay teenager committing suicide through the eyes of his younger sister. Rather than following a realistic path, Sienna's play highlights the absurdity of the situation that we're in. This play delves into a place of fantasy. The six-year-old sister meets the president at her science fair, but still can't win the attention of her parents. Mendes hopes the audience will connect with the six-year-old. I hope this is a play that forces you to take a step back and wonder how you are fitting into that narrative. I hope it's a play where people see themselves on stage. Amontane deals with the weight of gun control by making her piece about the aftermath rather than the event itself. Sienna finds an alternative method to confront this issue, making the play an absurdist one. In a lot of ways, I didn't find any other way to grapple with the heavy topic of gun violence. In late 2019, a Texas legislation was passed. It allows teachers to carry firearms on school campuses after they receive an authorization from the district. Receiving this authorization is elementary. The play, when it was just in my head and wasn't on paper yet, wasn't going to be absurd at all. It was going to be an examination of that legislation in Texas and the effects of a young gay teenager committing suicide. And there was nothing funny about it to me. And as I kept on thinking about that, and I kept on thinking about the absurdity of the situation of trying to tell that story through through a medium based in empathy, when the conversation was asking for such an ethical conversation to be had around the piece, I think that it just it became more and more impossible for me to write that play. And as it became more and more impossible for me to write that play, it became more and more impossible for the characters to grapple with the issue. And so in a lot of ways, the only way that I felt like I could responsibly answer something so complex in 60 minutes 
was to take it into a place of absurdity, into a place of fantasy. Why would anyone want to see a play about gun control? Amontain thinks that theater can be a powerful tool. I want people to think about the ramifications of what's happening in the world and how that is affecting us on a personal level, as well as a public level, as well as a generational level. I want people to think about the effects of trauma and how that can keep going from generation to generation. For Teen Arts Podcast, we are Ava, Huma, and Catherine, tapping out. Thanks for listening to this episode of our three-part podcast series. The Teen Arts Podcast is a part of the Teen Ticks Press Corps Newsroom, which works to connect teens to art journalism opportunities. Music by the Steve Griggs Ensemble, produced through the Jack Straw Artist Support Program. A huge thanks to our teaching artists, Marcy Silman and Daniel Gunther, and to our partner organizations, Mirror Stage and the Jack Straw Cultural Center, as well as the Teen Programs Manager at Teen Ticks, Mariko Nagashima. You can find us on teentix.org slash blog. That's T-E-E-N-T-I-X dot O-R-G slash B-L-O-G. Thanks for listening.